I'm in Oslo, Norway. It's a little cold at the uh, signing conference for the International Treaty to Ban Cluster Munitions. Uh, weapons so terrible, you pretty much have to see it to believe it. I first learned about cluster bombs from Jody Williams, who received the Peace Prize for her work on banning landmines. Just a few years later, Jody's husband is playing a key role in the movement to ban cluster munitions. This convention is a thing of beauty. Like many beautiful things, it is full of hope and promise. This convention is a categorical prohibition on cluster munitions. It must endure so that international humanitarian law is both protected and advanced. What is a cluster bomb? A cluster bomb or a cluster munition, sort of a broader phrase, is essentially a, a large container that opens up in midair and spews out hundreds of individual bomblets called submunitions. These spread out over a huge area, several football fields from a single cluster bomb and are essentially indiscriminate in their attack. So if you use them anywhere near civilian areas, you're almost guaranteed to kill and injure large numbers of civilians. To make matters worse, many of these individual bomblets, hundreds at a time, don't explode on contact. Instead, they function like anti-personnel landmines. They're still dangerous. They're still armed. You come along, you pick it up, you kick it, uh, they'll go off. It's a weapon that just kills and injures far too many civilians during the attack and then keeps on killing for days, weeks, months, years, even decades later. We've sold these weapons all over the world, yes? The U.S. has, without question, been the most prolific user of the weapon, going back to the Vietnam War, uh, up through use in Iraq in 2003. It's been the most prolific user, the most prolific producer, uh, the biggest exporter. The U.S. alone has cluster munitions containing almost one billion submunitions. A lot of these submunitions look like something that might be fun to play with. The ribbon is supposed to stabilize it in flight. It doesn't do that terribly well. But when it lays on the ground, a, a child sees an, an attractive thing that looks very much like a toy. And so we've seen them pick them up, and if they don't explode right away, they'll start twirling the ribbon around, and then they will explode. It's happened over and over again. I met a number of people in Oslo who are dedicating their lives to the fight to ban cluster munitions. Lynn Bradich is the mother of an American Marine who was killed in Iraq while clearing cluster bombs dropped by his own country. As with many people in the U.S., I had no knowledge of this weapon and its grievous impact on civilian populations until the death of my son, Corporal Travis John Braddock Nall. The majority of us don't think about what was left behind. And so I guess that's why I'm here. And it truly does give me a sense of peace to speak out. Mirna Ashur responded to the one million unexploded cluster munitions on the ground in southern Lebanon by becoming a professional deminer. Ainalem Zanebi of Ethiopia lost a leg to a cluster bomb when she was just seven years old. And 13-year-old Ayat Seliman was burned over 65% of her body by an American cluster bomb dropped during the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Hi, I'm Turk. My name is Ayat. What happened when your brother found a cluster bomb? My brother, Yakub, he go out and he take it. He throw it was a toy. Uh, he take it in, in the home that we were sitting all and it's bombed. Uh, my three brothers died. And you've had a lot of surgeries. 50, 50 operations. 50? 50. And we cannot live in Iraq, so we come to Sweden. And I have very problems now in school. They say that I'm ugly, and uh, they don't want to look to me. I think you're very beautiful. Thank you. Just as with the landmine ban 10 years ago, the U.S. is not going to sign the treaty to ban cluster bombs. At least not until the American people wake up and speak up. Pick an issue, Jody told me, 
and take the first step. There's one place where every concerned voter can start. Over 110 nations in the world have joined together, passed this treaty to ban cluster munitions. Unfortunately, you know, the United States is not participating and is obviously not going to sign this treaty. So I'm figuring you must have had a lot of email from people about this issue. We have had some. You have uh, Good. Over the last uh, couple of years, I'd say we probably have had uh, 50 or so uh, inquiries, uh, but uh, not that many since the treaty was signed. How many emails would it take to really wake somebody up in Washington? You know, it's not only the number of communications, which we certainly pay attention to, but it's the quality of the communication. I think the best kind of letter is the one that asks a question that a form letter in response cannot answer. I'm a big fan of votesmart.org. You put in your zip code and you get immediately comes back your list, everybody from the President of the United States down to the local dog catcher with emails and phone numbers. and. What are uh, other issues that you think that people should be paying attention to that they're not giving you any feedback? Well, in terms of the money that we appropriate every year, 55 cents of every dollar is going to military expenditures. 55 cents 55 of every 55 cents of every dollar that we appropriate in the Congress. We will spend as much in one week in Iraq as it would take to fund the college education for over a million students where we could be putting people on the dean's list instead of the uh, casualty list. It takes a good bit of public involvement to turn that around and say, well, is this all this money, is it really making us more secure? Or would using our good judgment and diplomacy buy us more security by participating in cluster bomb treaty or an attempt to reduce the dangers of the tremendous volume of nuclear warheads? Just electing someone is not enough. You have to have an informed public movement that really cares about how our budget is allocated. I think it is a matter of looking at it, but keeping some hope there that you can make a difference. The way to make a difference is to tell our president and Congress to sign the ban. If these kids can take a stand, why can't we? So here's an idea. Just a block from the Nobel Peace Center in Oslo, it occurred to me that perhaps it's time for the Peace Prize to be awarded to the children of the world. Does anyone deserve it more? <laughs>